everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a four day design that is a little bit interesting, I should say. So it is a plate that has a T-bone steak, some mashed potatoes and some green beans. And then you take off that plate and you can see the portrait of a very lovely cow underneath. And there are a gazillion reasons why I created this design. The first one that's coming to mind is that I support veganism and while we aren't 100% vegan, we do try our very best to limit our animal products that we consume, don't we, Melody? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Uh, for instance, one thing that we do in our household is that we drink almond milk, which we like, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yep, she's always drink almond milk. She's never actually had dairy or cow milk, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And we, every time that we can make an animal-free choice, we do. But though that being said, we live in a household of five people and sometimes we don't all agree. And while I'm bringing this all up is because I think that everybody can do something to change their daily habits that can support an animal free, an animal consumption free lifestyle. Even if you aren't 100% vegan, we're not 100% vegan, but if you can do something to just switch over towards that lifestyle, it's going to make a huge impact. And if everybody makes one small choice, it is a huge, huge, huge deal for the world over. And so I know that I saw a list of things that you could do and I just wanna share a few of them that I saw and I thought the whole idea was really inspirational just to make one choice. And so like for instance, drinking almond milk like we do or having one day a week where you go meatless. So have like a meatless Tuesday and every Tuesday, you know, you don't cook any meat in your household, you don't use any eggs or dairy or cheese or anything like that and just make one small choice to do it. Even if you don't feel like oh, you can commit to a fully vegan lifestyle. And so, that was a big part of what this design was about is just that little message to remember where your food comes from and remember what that impact is on the world. And then the second thing is this design is all done with Madame Glam gel polish as far as like the painting of the cow and that kind of a thing. And so for that element of it, I also want to congratulate Madame Glam on being vegan certified with vegan.org so they can now have that little V logo on their website, their products, etc. because they are a vegan company. Woohoo! Go Madame Glam! So that's another thing you can do if you want to go vegan is support a company that is vegan themselves. Like Madame Glam, they're PETA, you know, they love PETA and PETA loves them, whole, whole thing there. And so that's another thing that you can do if you do want to try to, you know, reach out into that aspect of your life. So I hope this maybe inspired somebody out there, anybody, just one person, and I feel like this, you know, my whole goal here was yes. accomplished. All right, and that's it. I hope you guys like this design, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. So we're going to begin with an overlay of a light blue acrylic. The blue I chose has a slight shimmer to it, which I think makes it look more like the sky. I always love this color. This is my favorite one to do a sky type design with because it always gives me that warm sunny day vibe. And then some little fluffy clouds with a shimmery white. Place a magnet in the middle of the nail to hold your plate later and then encapsulate this with a layer of clear acrylic. So this whole background actually is quicker to sculpt in my opinion than it would be to paint. So that's something that um, if you're just kind of getting into acrylic and you're just not so sure that you really want to commit to it, especially if you're in a salon, I know that there's actually very few salons that sculpt with acrylic as far as the color goes, if you can get it down where you can, you know, be fast with it, it is so much quicker than having to paint it too, than having to apply the acrylic, file it, then paint it, but just to apply the acrylic and file it and top coat and you're done and your client's out the door, you can take the next one. So that's just something to consider if you're, if you've never really done it before. But now we're going to sculpt our plate. So I placed a nail form backing on top of the nail, put the magnet on there. That way, you know, the magnets are going to stick to each other instead of having them repel and then sculpt a circle of white acrylic around that magnet. So make sure that your magnet is somewhat near the center of your plate too. But now I'm going to add a thicker lip of white acrylic around the edge of my plate, just so it kind of tips up like a plate does. Plates aren't typically completely flat. They usually have a little bit of an edge around the outside, sometimes more than others. I have actually seen though a few restaurants that have had completely flat plates and I actually thought it was really a cool effect too. But that's not your normal everyday thing. So we're just gonna thicken up that edge a little bit to make it look a little bit more like a traditional dinner plate does. So just place a little bit of wet acrylic around that outside edge and then as it's starting to set, use the tip of your brush to press it out almost as if you're starting to sculpt a rose. That's what I think it looks like, at least like the outer petals of a rose is the vibe I get. And then a little bit more acrylic to smooth out the center of it, just to kind of get rid of that line where the lip and the bottom meet. Smooth that out. And now with some brown acrylic, we're going to be sculpting our steak on one side of the plate. 
So place that down, bring it out. Try to use really dry acrylic or comparatively dry acrylic so that it doesn't fan out across your entire plate and create kind of a a brown sludginess on the pristine white color. Add a second layer of acrylic if you want to add more thickness to it. And then grab a floss pick. So a little bit like a, um, a flosser. What are they called? I can't think of what my husband always calls them. But you know, a regular floss pick. Dip it into some clear acrylic powder and then use the floss part of it to create indents for the grill marks on the steak going down the sides. And then I'm going to take some brown or some black acrylic, I mean, and I'm going to use very, very wet black acrylic and just wash over this. This is going to give you really easy grill marks on your steak. And then after you have those grill marks in, I would let that set up for just a moment. But now using white acrylic, we're going to be adding the T-bone element of it. So we're going to take that and just sort of apply it on there. If your acrylic is still slightly wet, it will make the white a little bit less white. So if you want it to be really bright white, wait longer to make sure that that acrylic was fully set before you did it. But if you want it to be a little bit more natural looking and a little bit more off white, then you can go in pretty quickly. So I'm going to grab a two-tone bead of white and yellow acrylic, and I'm going to swirl those to together to create my buttery mashed potatoes. And then I'm going to let that set up for a moment and then use my brush to really kind of manipulate the acrylic so it looks a bit lumpy. We're actually going for lumpy here. Usually with acrylic, lumpy is the farthest thing from what you want. But in this particular circumstance, we do want that. And then with some very wet brown acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting in my gravy right to the middle of the mashed potatoes and then kind of let it flow down the side and off and onto the plate. And now with green acrylic, we're going to be sculpting our green beans. And for me, the green beans, I didn't think looked dimensional enough as they were. So we will add some detail to those later, but just add a couple layers. I actually loved the way the steak and the potatoes turned out. I thought that they needed no further detailing just with what I was able to accomplish with the acrylic. And I love it when that happens. It's so exciting when you just, you sculpt something and it comes to life right before your eyes. But for me, the green beans needed just a little bit more pizzazz. So for that, I'm going to use Madame Glam's color, which is called pistachio, which is a really bright, very spring green. And I'm going to be adding a little bit of highlight to my green beans, then some matte gel top coat over the green beans and some gel sealer over the gravy in the mashed potatoes, and then something that's called um, 3D glaze over the steak. But basically what that is, is it is a traditional uh, top coat. So this is a lacquer top coat is basically what that 3D glaze is. So now on the nail itself, we're going to be drawing in our cow. So I'm going to use the color Perfect Black from Madame Glam. And I'm going to be doing just sort of the very basic first steps of my cow. So at this point, I'm just sort of finding where the face of my cow is, where the body is, and just getting the start of the different patches of black versus white in. Once I have that started, I'm going to cure it. And now I'm going to go through with perfect white. And I'm going to start filling in my cow's white areas. So I have the chest white and then the back of the cow white. And I'm not being super meticulous with this necessarily because a cow, their patterning is fairly random so you can do it any way you want and it's just fine and then I'm going to go down the front of my cow's face with that perfect white too and use kind of a dabby motion so that some of the black that's underneath shows through so that it's not just bright bright white but actually looks a little bit more furry and realistic and now you're using the color upper east side which is a dark gray even though I think it is categorized more as like a dark gray blue on Madame Glam's website I don't think it's very blue so I always use it as a gray but it creates really nice shading on the cow especially over the black for some highlights and then you can also use it on the white for some shadows so add some just beginning detail to your cow with that color add some more black to where it needs to be black if there is some spots that I kind of overdid it with the white and then after I have that done I'm going to use the color cashmere gray which is a very very light gray and I'm going to use it to add some shading to my cow here and there so I'm gonna do some on the back and some on the sides that one is such a light gray you almost can't tell that it's gray so I actually went back through with my upper east side and created sort of a mix between the upper east side and the cashmere gray flash cure that really quick and then I'm going to use the color pink me up which I think is really fun to say but it's just a nice pink I'm going to be applying that to my cow's nose you don't want it to be so pink that it looks like bright pink so if you want you can take a dry brush and sort of dab it to let some of it to kind of pick some of that pink back up and then going back to the perfect white I'm going to be adding outlines on my cow's nose some more details with perfect black on my cow's snout like his uh, nostrils and his lips kind of outlining them just a little bit some more highlights here and there with the upper east side just keep adding details until you're happy is basically what 
what the deal is here. I'm going to thin out the white highlights on her eyes and then apply a layer of matte gel top coat over Mr. Cow. I just called her her and then said Mr. Cow. Who knows? But then after that's cured, this design is done. I love it so much. And like I said, if everyone could just make one small choice to help the earth, all the cows and Melody would be super happy about it. Speaking of Melody, here's a Melody Minutes. What you doing, Melody? I'm taking a drink. What are you drinking? Tea. What, what kind? Tea. What kind? Tea. Flavor? Yeah. <laughs> I 